All right, so look, man, we got the top 10 people that the CIA fear the most. I'm not sure how an individual can scare the CIA, but <laughs> that's why I had to click on this video when I seen it, man. Um, shouts out to uh, the bro that sent this to me that told me to check it out. But we're about to hop straight into it, man. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you like this video. Let's check out these 10 cr crazy folks, man. Let's get it. There are some horrible people in the world and we have rounded up 10 of the worst for you. Here are the top 10 people the CIA fears the most. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have Scott Erskine. We are starting off this list with truly one of the worst people I've ever heard about. Scott's story starts off when he was a child and suffered an injury that involved his head and brain. He seemed to recover fine physically, but continued to complain of headaches and that sort of thing, and it is unclear if these things were ever looked into further. At a very young age, he began to commit violent crimes against others that I truly cannot even speak about here on YouTube. He spent four years in prison so if you can't even speak about these things on youtube then how the hell are we supposed to know why he's so fair <laughs> like you can't even give no abbreviation or nothing others that i truly cannot even speak about here on youtube he spent four years in prison for one of his crimes when he was around 17 years old but when he was paroled after the four years he immediately began committing crimes again in 1993 scott invited a woman who was waiting for the bus into his home and ended up holding her hostage for several days after letting her go he was quickly arrested and ended up being sentenced to 70 years in prison this is when he had to submit DNA to a database, and in March of 2001, the DNA was matched when the cold cases of the unsolved murders of Jonathan Sellers and Charlie Kiever were reopened. In 2004, a jury sentenced him to death, and six days later, he was transferred to San Quentin. In an interesting turn of events, Scott did die on death row, but it wasn't due to a scheduled execution. Scott died a couple years ago in July of 2020 after contracting COVID-19. In our number 9 oh, spot wow. today, we have Dennis BTK Raider. The BTK killer, whose real name is Dennis Raider, was one of the worst serial killers from 1974 to 1991. He left taunting letters to... 74 to 91. <laughs> Hold on. I, I, look, I, I ain't the best at math, but damn. How you get away with all of these joints from 74 to 91? Bro, that's crap. 17 years. Police and newspapers where he described his crimes, but thankfully his annoyingly large and misplaced ego is what led to his demise. Because he craved the attention so badly, in 2004 he started communicating with the media again to try and be all smug or whatever, but this, combined with his utter lack of knowledge on how technology works, led to him being arrested in 2005. Imagine getting away with those crimes for so long and your ego and your own ignorance does you in in the end. During his trial, he didn't apply from 74 to 91 and still didn't get arrested till 05. Apologize for his crimes, but he did describe them in full detail, which is horrifying and honestly very unnerving. After his trial, he ended up being sentenced to 10 consecutive life sentences with a minimum of 175 years. When Raider was first arrested and police were taking him to the station, an officer asked him, Mr. Raider, do you know why you're going downtown? To which he replied, oh, I have suspicions why. <laughs> Ew. In our number 8 spot today, we have Chester Turner. Chester is an American serial killer who, on April 30th, 2007, was convicted of taking the lives of 11 women in the Los Angeles area, and on June 19th, 2014, he was convicted of four more that they were able to tie back to him. He has been referred to by prosecutors as one of the most prolific serial killers in the city's history, and if you know Los Angeles' history with things Eleven like that, women. that is not something to take lightly. In his original trial that led to conviction, Chester was sentenced to death, but at the following one in 2014, he also received an additional death sentence. In the end, like with a lot of these kinds of stories, DNA came to save the day and help authorities find out who was committing these horrible, horrible crimes. In our number seven spot today, we have Gary Ridgway. This horrible human being is also sometimes known as the Green River Killer, and his crimes took place somewhere between 1982 to potentially as recent as 2001. He was convicted of 49 crimes, but confessed to an 
unbelievable 71, which makes him the second most prolific serial killer in the United States in terms of confirmed killings. Most of his victims were either sex workers or... 71? <laughs> yeah, they got a reason to be scared of bro. Hold up. Unbelievable 71, which makes him the second most prolific serial killer in the United States in terms of confirmed killings. Most of his victims were either sex workers or women in other vulnerable circumstances, and through DNA profiling evidence, in 2001, authorities were able to connect him to four of his crimes. From there, they made a deal with him where they would spare him the death sentence in exchange for disclosure of the location of all of the missing women. Gary took the deal and was spared the death sentence and instead was sentenced to life without the possibility of parole. Not only did he say that he chose the type of victims he did because they were quote easy to pick and that he quote hated most of them, but he also called his crimes his career. <laughs> I hate him. In our number six spot today, we have Charles N.G. Charles' story really starts off shortly after he moved to the United States on a student visa. He dropped out after his first semester and soon after he was involved in a hit and run accident. He then tried to avoid prosecution by enlisting in the United States Marine Corps using false documents that stated his birthplace was within the United States. He was arrested by military police a year later for stealing automatic weapons and then somehow he escaped custody, headed back towards Northern California, and this is where he met Leonard Lake, who is another real piece of work. Charles did end up going away and serving a bit of time, but it was only 18 months and then he was back with Leonard, and that is when the two started their crime spree together. It is believed that together the pair took the lives of somewhere from 11 to 25 different people. When Leonard was caught and brought in for questioning, he sneakily took a cyanide pill he had hidden in his jacket and took his own life, but Charles ended up standing trial. He was convicted for 11 of the killings and he remains on death row at San Quentin. In our number 5 spot today we have Robert Picton. This horrible person is one of the worst Canadians to ever live and is one of our country's worst serial killers ever. Picton dropped out of school and began working at his family's pig farm, and this is where most of his absolutely horrific crimes took place. He was first arrested in 2002 and was convicted in 2007 of taking the lives of six people, but throughout an extremely lengthy investigation, evidence of many more killings came to light. During his time in jail, an undercover police officer posed as his cellmate and Picton confessed to 49 crimes to him. Apparently, he was saying to the undercover officer that he wanted to take one more life to make it an even 50 and that he only got caught because he was sloppy. The entire trial was a bit of a mess but even it led to a 50. life sentence without the possibility of parole for 25 years which was the longest possible sentence under Canadian law at the time. This unfortunately does mean that he will be eligible for parole within the next decade so let's hope that never ever happens. In our number 4 spot today we have the Golden State Killer. The Golden State Killer is one of the most well-known serial killers ever, and that is never a good thing. From 1973 to 1986, the GSK was responsible for taking the lives of 13 people, harming 50, and 120 different burglaries all across California. Throughout the investigation process, he used different tactics to both taunt and threaten police and the victims, which is just on a whole other disgusting level. Through recent genetic testing, like those 23andMe things, the identity of the GSK was finally revealed after years and years of investigations. Basically, they uploaded a DNA profile that they were able to get from the crime scenes to the website GED Match. They were able to find 10 to 20 people who had the same great, great, great grandparents as a match. And then from there, the genealogist made a large family tree and from there they were then able to single out two main suspects. After covertly collecting DNA samples from one of the suspects and comparing them with the crime scene DNA, they were finally able to arrest Joseph James D'Angelo, who is the Golden State Killer. After decades of waiting, the victims of his crimes were finally able to see justice served as he was sentenced to 12 life sentences 
plus eight years. He was spared the death penalty because he admitted to numerous crimes that he had perpetrated, some of which he wasn't even being charged for. He is now 75 years old and will definitely spend the rest of his life in prison. In our number three spot today, we have Rodney Alaka. Rodney is a horrible monster who was convicted and sentenced to death for five killings that he committed in California from 1977 to 1979. A lot of these people is from California. California got the most serial killers. He also received an additional 25 years to life after pleading guilty to two other killings in New York from 1971 to 1977. Rodney got away with his crimes for a while because he wasn't the top of the list of suspects because he was said to be the quote, charming photographer. Rodney is often referred to as the dating game killer because of his appearance on the show, which with what we now know about him is absolutely horrifying. What's even crazier is that he actually won the show he was on, but the episode's <laughs> Bachelorette refused to go on a date with him because she found him, quote, creepy. This is just a right. reminder to always trust. She lucky she ain't go on a date with him or she would have been part of the, the bunch. Your instincts. It isn't exactly known just how many victims Rodney had. It is potentially thought that it could be much higher than the number he was convicted for. In July of last year, Rodney passed away in prison at the age of 77. In our number two spot today, we have the Zodiac Killer. This one had to make it on this list today because while there are a plethora of terrifying people on this list, nothing is as terrifying as an uncaught serial killer, and the Zodiac is definitely the most prolific of them all. The Zodiac Killer took the lives of five people in the San Francisco Bay Area between December 1968 and October 1969. He was most known for targeting young couples or a lone male cab driver. Despite two people luckily and thankfully escaping his attempted evil doings, he has still never been caught. He was what? one of those losers who left notes and stuff for the police to find. I like that they think they're being all cool and clever and brave while they do that. Like, if you're so brave and almighty and unafraid, then show us your face. While no one has heard wow. from the Zodiac since 1974, the case remains active. So now she, she, she's starting to piss me off. Why would he show his face? Why would he claim this shit? He, he the only one that was smart enough to actually want to get away. <laughs> like, what the hell? in many different countries and maybe one day we'll finally know who the real Zodiac is. In our number one spot today we have Robert Hansen. Robert is often referred to as the Butcher Baker and his story truly is horrific. He is one of the most prolific serial killers in Alaska's history because for over a decade he would kidnap women and bring them into the wilderness where he would then stalk them like prey. I am just now realizing that there is definitely an episode of Criminal Minds so he taking these shorties, taking them to the woods and stalking them like prey? Yeah, he's a nutball. <laughs> Minds about this guy. Sometimes the premise is just so dark that it sticks with you. The reason he got away with his crimes for so long is because outside of these horrific things, he was just a soft-spoken baker. One of my best friends has the nicest, most kind bakers for parents, and now I'm starting to feel a little suspicious. Might want to look into them, Robin. Robert was heading to church by day and prowling strip clubs at night looking for the next person to take. What led to the downfall of this horrible monster was a badass named Cindy Paulson who was able to escape from Robert and was sure to leave evidence behind. She then went to authorities and told them what happened and this led to a search warrant for Robert's property, which is where all the evidence they needed lied. Robert is believed to have taken the lives of at least 17 women and in 1983 he was sentenced to 461 years and a Why life sentence without the, the possibility of parole. All right, guys, that has been our list for today. Thank you so much for checking it out. I've been your host today, Olivia Kozlowski, and I'll see you next time. Why is everybody killing the women? That's the craziest thing to me. It's not even that, like, yeah, being a serial killer is top-notch weird, but the fact that you killing just straight women, like, Ah, uh, yeah, there ain't no place in the world for people like that. That's by far the craziest stuff to me. Like, you cannot be out here slaughtering the females. I don't care what they did or who, who scarred you or what. Like, that's just, you just taking, just taking advantage of the weak period is just crazy to me, man. Let me know what y'all think about this. If them is the top 10 in your eyes or opinion, 
definitely let me know if you want to send me some videos that's like this or anything that you want to see me do next make sure you send them to me comments um, any social medias just make sure you get in touch with me man we're about to get up out of here sub up make sure you like the video gram tv